Welcome and thanks for being here, everyone. Mikhail Roshkov is an ML engineer and MLOps solution architect with over seven years of experience in machine learning and data science. He is a founder of the ML REPA community and author of courses on ML automation, DVC, and MLOps topics. If you've taken our online course, you will recognize him as the lead instructor. He has helped over 200 engineers learn advanced concepts and tools for ML engineering and ML ops, and has collaborated with 50 plus companies and ML teams in the US, Europe, and Asia to design ML ops processes and integrate open source tools. He joined us today to teach us how to build data validation and model monitoring pipeline with DVC and Evidently. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mikhail. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you very much, uh, iterative uh, team. Uh, to invite me uh, to this meetup. This is the first time I think I present here. Uh, even when I was a part of the iterative team, <laughs> I didn't join somehow. I don't know, my bad. So <laughs> um, let's uh, correct this mistake today. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, let me share my screen then and uh, I'll start with some introduction and uh, that about some slide about me and uh, we'll jump into the topic and uh, later we'll have uh, time for discussion i hope uh, we'll have time Danny, uh, do we have uh, around one hour right uh, yep. for the, the whole meeting for yep. meetup? okay yeah today we'll uh, talk about uh, data validation and model monitoring pipelines and uh, i'll show you an example how that two uh cool tools like DVC and evidently I could be uh, work together for these purposes. Uh, as Jenny said, I, I uh, am a machine learning engineer and a consultant in MLOps, and uh, I had that uh, opportunity to work with iterative team. It was a very good time. And now I mostly uh, work with an independent consultant, and uh, we also organize some meetups for ML Reaper community. Uh, this community about uh, tools for uh, machine learning automations for MLOps. And actually, uh, my uh, this community was started around DVC uh, five years ago or four years ago. Uh, and uh, we started with uh, DVC and then and added uh, more different tools and uh, scenarios uh, around the uh, uh, pipelines automation. OK, today uh, we'll talk about uh, data validation and model monitoring. Uh, and specifically, we'll focus on uh, how it works with Evidently and how uh, we can build DVC pipelines uh, with uh, this functionality uh, that Evidently brings to machine learning projects. OK, let's go. Uh, I'm sure that you uh, know this uh, picture about uh, uh, stack uh, of uh, different te technical technical uh, problems and tasks for machine learning projects and uh, some part of this is, of course is, uh, are about uh, data validation and monitoring and for this we start with we have some tasks for data validation at model training stages and then uh, of course we have uh, we need to monitor our data and predictions and system when we run uh, our models in production and generate some predictions. So let's uh, jump into this uh, visualization of MLOps workflow uh, from the Google uh, MLOps uh, practitioner guys guide. Uh, something like that. Sorry, I didn't uh, add uh, the reference link to this, but uh, sorry for this. And um, I also hope that you saw this picture and here I only added this timeline and the idea of this timeline that uh, if at the current step, step uh, current time, we have our model in production and the model generates uh, some predictions, we need to monitor this, right? Uh, but uh, usually this monitoring stuff, like the model performance monitoring, occurs at the next uh, time period because we need uh, at, at least for uh, batch scoring uh, machine learning pro uh, projects like uh, uh, applications for banks, uh, telecoms, uh, we need some, we have some uh, time lag be, uh, before we get the ground truth labels for our target uh, data. And only after that, we uh, 
and run the monitoring tasks. So uh, that's why he has a like tip not plus one. So this is some uh, uh, period of time in the future. And uh, the timing minus one here is uh, that uh, usually we train our model somewhere in the past. Uh, so with this, uh, we can jump into that uh, uh, we, into discussion where we need to uh, have data quality and model evaluations and validations. So uh, definitely we uh, can do some data quality checks and data validation at uh, training steps, right? So before, uh, for example, we rerun uh, training our model for production use on the, the whole uh, data set we have, uh, we need to uh, check that this data is correct and uh, there are not, not uh, like uh, much problems with uh, data drift, etc. And also we have some model evaluation. Usually this is a part of uh, the training pipeline, but uh, uh, like from when we automate the whole pipeline, this actually looks the same as a, a model performance monitoring at, produ uh, at uh, production stage because we use... Uh, usually the same metrics, at least like uh, the uh, most common metrics, they are usually the same. Uh, next, for uh, prediction serving step, we need to monitor our system that uh, runs uh, our prediction service, the data quality that we use to uh, generate this prediction. And also we here we can um, estimate the prediction read. And uh, at least we, uh, before we get uh, information about ground truth labels, uh, at least we can uh, check that uh, uh, distribution of our predictions are the same, looks the same as uh, at the previous steps and uh, it means like nothing, uh, nothing changed too much. And when we uh, go to the monitoring step, we get the uh, ground truth data and we can uh, do model performance monitoring and uh, check the like, real target tree. So this is uh, just mapping of different data validation and monitoring tasks into this MLOps workflow. Okay, so this is the whole picture. Let's uh, jump to the our tools like Evidently and DVC and understand how both tools can help us with uh, to, to handle these tasks. So uh, for monitoring, we have like a Let's say let's uh, we'll focus on two problems. Uh, one problem is what and why we should monitor for our projects, and this uh, uh, like these requirements uh, mostly uh, are from uh, from business perspective, from uh, user experience, and uh, some specific uh, specific machine learning applications. So in some cases, we so uh, metrics for regression and classifications are different. Uh, timeline and uh, uh, I'll say frequency that uh, required for uh, to monitor it, monitor our data and uh, our system also may be different, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is like uh, uh, I call it uh, ML and business and UX requirements. So what and why should we monitor? And the second problem is uh, how to make this monitor work. And this is some operational requirements. So how we can schedule uh, uh, and uh, trigger the monitoring jobs, how, where we should run it, so what infrastructure and resources, how we can get access, how we calculate metrics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, at the end, how we visualize and use these uh, monitor results of these monitor monitoring jobs. So this is operational requirements. And uh, in this example, we will show that uh, DVC and, and evidently AI uh, covers different uh, parts of these requirements. So DVC uh, can help mostly with these operational requirements and uh, can automate these monitoring pipelines, uh, deal with uh, accessing and managing data, versioning stuff, etc. And evidently uh, helps to calculate the metrics that you need for your project and uh, generate different visualization that you need. So in the simple scenario is just uh, HTML reports. Uh, in the most complex scenarios is, uh, so this uh, monitoring results can be stored in databases and visualized with uh, uh, Grafana dashboards or some other BI tools, for example. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, let's jump to evident AI and uh, for uh, whom uh, like I, I just uh, briefly discuss uh, inter introduce you to evidently AI so evidently AI is a library that uh, helps to uh, help you to uh, calculate different metrics for model quality data drifts and data quality and also can help you to generate some visualization around this. And it has a uh, few core concepts. First concept is metrics. So metrics is some components that evaluate specific aspect of uh, the data or model quality. So in this example, we have uh, widgets that just visualize these uh, metrics. So metrics is uh, each, each uh, value here for uh, different ML metrics are like a metrics concept from, um, from evident AI. The same as this distribution. So actually is like a common column value range metric that can help us to uh, define this. Ranges, etc. So there are some metrics that you can calculate with evident AI. And those metrics can be uh, aggregated into different reports. So the uh, reports are just com combination of different metrics. So you just uh, select what metrics you want to see in the report for uh, your purposes and uh, uh, just uh, save these results and, uh, as a report. Uh, evident AI has some metrics presets. So this is just uh, pre-built reports like of the commonly used metrics for different uh, tasks from data drifts and regression uh, tasks to uh, NLP projects, for example. And uh, also it has uh, tests. Uh, this is tests are very similar to metrics, but uh, tests has some <clears throat> specific uh, value that uh, is used to compare uh, the calculated value against this uh, test value and decide whether your uh, system or metric passed this test or not. And also uh, you, you may have such kind of visualization. Okay, and so how, how does it work? Uh, there to calculate these metrics and run this uh, uh, reports generation, you need two data sets. So evidently use reference data set is uh, for that uh, like that, that uses a basis baseline and uh, it can, it needs a second data set, the current data set that uh, and both data set just uh, used to generate uh, these reports, calculate metrics and organize them in these reports. So this is how uh, like what we need into uh, this monitoring pipeline. Just define what is our reference data set and what is our current data set are, and then uh, run this calculation uh, of, of uh, metrics we need. Uh, if you are interested in the like uh, <clears throat> uh, like simple example how these reports can be uh, built and visualized. Uh, in simple UI using Streamlit, you can uh, find the links to our uh, um, blog post and uh, example of uh, that that we presented just a couple of weeks ago uh, with evidently team. So, and I think it, it's very like simple uh, example of what uh, you can build with evidently AI and how to start with it. But we go. Go to the uh, second uh, topic is uh, design monitoring pipeline. So uh, I hope that most of the people know about DVC and how it works here <laughs> on this meetup. That's how I, why I don't have the separate uh, a section about DVC basics, uh, right? And uh, I just, uh, so we'll continue with some uh, high level uh, requirements for the this uh, pipelines first and then just jump into the uh, dvc pipelines and how they uh, can be configured so for this example i choose the bike demand forecasting uh, data set uh, and uh, thanks to evidently i they have uh, a lot of examples with uh, this data set so it was uh, much easier to uh, prepare this example or integration example and this data set actually um, predicts, um, like used to, to train the model that uh, predict the demand for, uh, for the uh, renting bikes at different uh, time for each hour. There are some set of features like a temperature, humidity, 
holidays, etc. And so we just use this feature and generate prediction for each hour, uh, how many bikes uh, will be in demand uh, in uh, some city. And uh, for our example, I uh, choose two, uh, three separate pipelines. The train pipeline that uh, actually download data, train the model, and then run model evaluation to calculate metrics. Then the uh, predict pipeline, uh, the prediction pipeline, of course, generate prediction for new data. And uh, monitoring pipeline that uh, uh, like waits until we get that uh, ground truth labels and then calculate performance model performance reports. Uh, in this, uh, for, for this example, of course, we have only one data set and we only use different, uh, I'll say that uh, time periods to define what uh, data we use to train model, what data we use to uh, generate predictions, etc. Uh, just to sim simplify this uh, configuration, but uh, it very really, it looks uh, similar to the real life projects where. Uh, all these three steps are separated in time. And of course, the first you train the model and then at the next separate time period. And, more, and usually in uh, using the different uh, resources, uh, I mean, computation resources, uh, clouds, servers, you run the prediction and then also uh, as a separate pipeline, you run these monitoring jobs. And for each of these pipeline, we'll uh, generate different reports. Uh, model evaluation report for the train, data quality uh, when we run prediction, and the target drift and model performance for monitoring steps. Okay, and results of this uh, uh, monitor monitoring jobs will save in uh, different uh, subdirectories under the reports uh, directory. Uh, spe separate uh, train subdirectory for the train pipeline and uh, the subdirectory that uh, use, uh, uses this uh, start and end peri uh, time period for, for the uh, prediction period are used as a name of uh, subdirectory where we store this uh, quality, data quality and target uh, drift reports. Okay, let's uh, go to, so this is like a conceptual uh, idea what, what we want to uh, achieve. And now let's talk about DVC and how it works with this. Uh, first, to achieve this uh, solution, uh, we prepared three separate DVC pipelines, right? In the most use cases and examples, uh, in get started, etc. We have only one DVC pipeline, uh, only one DVC.yaml uh, configuration file with a different stage inside. And uh, this is very good uh, scenario uh, with uh, when we have the um, when when we need to run the whole pipeline uh, using one command like DVC repro or DVC expand, right? And uh, DVC uh, manage how to run all the stages inside and uh, track uh, outputs, uh, dependencies, et cetera, et cetera, right? But uh, here uh, we want to achieve us another uh, result. We want to run these <clears throat> stages independently. And uh, yeah, that's why uh, we decided to split it into separate uh, DVC pipelines. So here we have uh, three different pipelines train, predict, and not predict, but monitor here, of course. Okay, uh, and to run each of this pipeline, uh, you may use the command like this, dvc repro, and then the path to the uh, dvc, dvc.yaml uh, file under the these uh, subdirectories, so for each of this pipeline. Okay, uh, later I'll show the, the code for these uh, pipelines, if you like. So this is how it looks like in the uh, repository. We have this uh, directory in the repository root, the pipelines, and inside for each separate pipeline, we have uh, dvc.yaml and param.yaml files. And uh, like we pretend that this uh, 
train pipeline is used for development purposes, right? We need to train our model. And this is usually uh, the, the pipeline that looks like uh, just like uh, most of the use cases on uh, DVC uh, documentation. Uh, the pipeline with a lot of stages for, for to train model and uh, then evaluate model. And the uh, other pipelines to predict to generate predictions and monitor our models are like a prod, prod production scenarios and they will be used and run in the separate time and uh, uh, probably in like separate environments uh, specifically for production use. Right, and this is uh, the, the second solution we need here is um, uh, manage our uh, monitoring configuration using params.yaml file. This uh, the params.yaml file is uh, the main configuration way to configure uh, ML pipelines using DVC. Right, so why not to put all our configuration we need to run this monitoring stuff into this params.yaml file? Uh, as uh, so, when you start to work, like okay, to to, to run uh, monitoring jobs with evidently AI, you need to define the column ma mappings. So uh, evidently, want to understand which column, for example, we used uh, as a uh, to to store our predictions. What are the target column? and what are uh, num numerical and categorical uh, features in our data sets. So uh, all this information we will use to build this, uh, the object uh, or columns mapping. And this object then used uh, to uh, uh, in uh, the reports uh, generators. And also we can use some information about uh, the, the model and the reference data set we used uh, to generate this uh, report and uh, where uh, and how we store our reports, final reports. So in this case, this is a monitoring job. We have, we save two reports, the model performance reports and that uh, target drift reports. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, so, okay, next step, uh, reports version. Uh, because we use DVC, and we specify uh, these reports as outputs of the DVC pipeline. So DVC automatically uh, control versions of this uh, data set, uh, these artifacts, I mean, these uh, monitor reports, and you can uh, just uh, automatically keep versions of your uh, monitoring reports aligned with the uh, configurations, right, and version of code that used to generate this report. So this is uh, like uh, out of the box. The the, the feature, by default that features that DVC provides you with the DVC pipelines, and this is very cool. And and the last solution uh, we use here is uh, the access uh, or feature of DVC feature is the uh, ability to provide access to artifacts. Uh, in the production stage. So, for example, in this, exa in this example, we uh, run <clears throat> train pipeline to generate our models, and also it uh, stores the reference data set that we'll later use to uh, generate our uh, monitor reports. Uh, and after you push this reference data to uh, DVC storage, later you can just uh, pull this uh, data set uh, to, to the machine uh, that they used to run the monitoring pipeline or prediction pipeline. In this case, it's for monitor, monitor, monitoring pipeline. So uh, for, use case, for solutions uh, or features we used to uh, build this example are separate pipelines for different purposes and for different environments and different time. Uh, then uh, monitoring configuration we put into the params.yaml file. Uh, version of our reports and uh, like just automatically <laughs> DVC provide us this access to artifacts we saved and version with DVC. That's it. We, uh, and this is uh, what we have in this example. Also, we can um, add more uh, improvements like uh, using Hydra configuration uh, to simplify uh, configs. 
because right now we have a separate parameter.yaml file for each pipeline and uh, they are uh, overlapping and duplicate some configuration uh, and uh, it can be difficult to manage this in production and it just needs uh, some tweaks to um, use hydro configuration just to reuse the uh, common params that are just used for each pipeline like model names reference data set names etc cetera, etc cetera. and also we can uh, use uh, some cloud storage like s3 to uh, store and share uh, these monitoring reports so uh, i guess that's it uh, from the uh, slides perspective uh, now we can jump into the uh, code i'll use i'll show you a little bit of this code and uh, show um, how this uh, looks like, this uh, evidently reports. Okay, let's start with this. Uh, this is a, a model performance report that is generated at uh, the monitoring stage in our pipeline. And for we use regression uh, preset uh, here and it automatically calculate this uh, uh, mean average, uh, I mean, absolute average, uh, um, so uh, yes, MAE, uh, MAE, and uh, MAPE. This matrix for uh, for regression model performance evaluation, and also can plot some uh, distribution of uh, predicted versus actuals and uh, some um, errors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's uh, quite a lot of things that it uh, that. Uh, evidently automatically adds to these uh, monitor reports and uh, they're quite extensive. You can control what kind of data you want to put into these reports, of course, but uh, for simplicity, we just use that uh, preset. So how to uh, we run this uh, report for model performance? Let me just navigate to... Uh, our project. So in this repository, just close it. Uh, here uh, pipe is a pipelines uh, directory, right? And inside we have these uh, three uh, DVC pipelines. So let's jump into this uh, uh, pipeline for monitoring task. So this pipeline just uh, runs uh, our, mo our monitor model Python script and uh, saves uh, our monitor monitor reports for target drift and for model performance. So let's go to this uh, uh, monitor model script and inside it's uh, just uh, we just load some configuration, right? We then uh, get uh, load the predictions and uh, actual data set the reference data set and uh, yes here we use the numerical features and categorical categorical features we extract them from a config and then we use them to build this uh, column mapping object that is used by evidently and then so this part actually is uh, the part that actually cal calculates uh, this report. So for model performance reports, we use the uh, just pass the regression preset object to the report uh, class, and then just uh, run it with uh, reference and current data sets. And we also pass this column mapping to this run method. And that's it. As a result, we get uh, this. Uh, model performance report object that we can save as HTML, or for example, we can save it as a dictionary uh, or as JSON or, or uh, get uh, some Python dictionary from this report and use it in some way we need. As a result, we save this uh, model performance .html file into this uh, subdirectory, and this is how it looks like. Alternatively, uh, alternatively, we can uh, let me show you this the, another pipeline. It's uh, 
training pipeline. So here, of course, we train the model and we have this evaluate stage inside. And this stage downloads the model we just trained and uh, generates model performance report as well, but uh, specifically uh, the performance uh, on the training data set, right? And also it uh, saved the metrics for this stage. So let's um, open this evaluate stage and I'll show you that we use the same regression preset that we use for monitoring purposes, but uh, we only uh, pass the different data sets here. So uh, for uh, reference data, okay, its data is the same, uh, but uh, test data is uh, the specific uh, data set that we use to test our model. That's it. And as a result, we get some uh, model performance reports. We extract from their uh, metrics we need and save these metrics into the metrics JSON file uh, that looks like this. So just a simple uh, JSON. And actually DVC can understand these uh, JSON matrix files, right? And this why we just uh, uh, pass this uh, matrix file as a matrix into the DVC pipeline. And uh, DVC understand that, yes, this is matrix. Um, and it can show us this metrics from, so you can uh, work with this metrics uh, like in in the way that like uh, that DVC can work with them. So uh, we use the Abandoned AI not only for monitor purposes, but uh, also uh, you can use it to generate the evaluation report for your model at the training step and uh, save this metrics information for yourself. Um, I guess that's it from my side. Uh, the only one thing probably here. No, I think that's it. And just a uh, short <laughs> advertisement that uh, if you are interested in such kind of topics, please uh, go to our community and uh, we'll have some few uh, another interesting talks in these uh, months about uh, other, other uh, mm, topics and tasks. Uh, about ML auto, et cetera. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much, Mikael. That was awesome. Very detailed. Does anyone have any questions for Mikael? I think I have one question. Uh, could you please tell more about how you run this monitoring pipeline every day? And should we, for instance, mark this pipeline has always changed because DVC might think I that nothing has changed and there is no need to rerun pipeline on monitoring so it might be a problem. Yes, thank you. This is a good question and this is uh, like what I don't have uh, as an example in this uh, repository in this tutorial right. Uh, so here we just focus on the to design and uh, build these uh, pipelines with the DVC and evidently AI, and we just leave aside this uh, how you should schedule these runs. But the idea here is like this uh, training pipeline you can just use uh, like uh, uh, in a common way, just rerun it uh, as soon as you need to to experiment with the model you train. Uh, those uh, pipelines for Mm, for monitoring and uh, prediction, uh, to schedule them, you need uh, some uh, separate, like external tool that will run them and trigger them uh, at the specific um, timeline. Uh, like, for example, is uh, Prefect, Airflow, or you use uh, CI CD uh, pipelines uh, to, sc to schedule running these uh, pipelines, right? To, uh, and it you can also pass some uh, updates to these pipelines like a dates uh, date you uh, want to use to run this pipeline and you to make it sure that uh, DVC actually runs this uh, pipeline again uh, you can just specify that uh, force uh, argument to DVC expron 
if you like. But uh, yeah, yeah. To, to be sure, th this is one. Uh, th this is exactly uh, the reason why we separate this uh, prediction pipeline from the uh, model training pipeline. Because the, you need to rerun this again and again, maybe some, or in the, on a regular basis, and uh, you uh, don't need to be like uh, uh, you don't want the DVC just keep running this pipeline because nothing changed. So specifically for this pipeline, you'll use uh, like minus F to uh, force running this pipeline. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you Thanks, for question. We have another question from Natalie in the chat. She asks, can you recommend a tutorial or maybe give some tips on how this can be integrated with fast AI training is done in AWS SageMaker? Okay, good question. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know such kind of tutorials or specifically for fast AI. Like uh, th this approach looks like uh, framework agnostic. Inside this uh, train stage, uh, like you may choose any uh, framework and any model you want to train. So uh, for, for DVC, it doesn't matter actually uh, what kind of model you use, what kind of framework you use to train the model, right? Um, I don't know, actually, I, I never tried to run the DVC pipelines on, on SageMaker. And uh, I'm not sure that how it works. So uh, I think, no, I'm sure that it's possible. <laughs> I hope it's possible, but uh, I never did it. And I, I don't know such uh, tutorials. I, I was recently talking to another community member that is working on with Label Studio and DVC and how to combine those things together. And he was asking for exactly the same question. <laughs> so um, I think it's content that we need to work on internally and make some kind of blog post for. So it's duly noted. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any other questions? Yeah, only the only thing here actually that evidently AI at this, uh, like uh, right now don't have functionality to calculate, to, to monitor, uh, image data sets and, uh, and calculate some metrics for, for computer vision. Okay, so uh, evidently it, it, this it, covers tabular data, is that right? Yes, yes, it works as tabular data and text data, so for NLP tasks. Uh, yeah, I, I think that it, it's possible to calculate some uh, classification reports uh, based on if you like have prepared some, some uh, data for the evidently um, format, but it's not like uh, straight away. And I don't think this is the use case. So for computer vision, as I know, as I know, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, they don't have functionality right now. Okay. Yeah, I think like what he was asking for is just the actual part of automating a pipeline using SageMaker and, and DVC together. So. Uh, yes, uh, I, I understand. Like, like okay, so for, from uh, readily part, for monitor part, uh, probably you can uh, switch to another tool that can provide this monitor for computer vision and it's, it's uh, okay. For uh, SageMaker, I don't know exactly and uh, how to run this uh, DVC pattern and how, like, yeah, what, what limitation of strategy maker mm -hmm. DVC pipelines. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this product update video, please like and subscribe. Thanks, DV. And feel free to post comments and questions below. On our YouTube channel, we share videos on product updates, tutorials, and how members of our community use our tools as they solve problems in their domains spanning a wide variety of fields in the machine learning and AI space. See the description below to find links in the docs for our tools. Also visit our blog where you can find tutorials on our tools as well as product and company news. Join our Discord server to get support, help others grappling with the same issues as you, connect with other like-minded folks, and discuss our tools or other topics in the MLOps space. 
We also have a job channel where you can find relevant job opportunities in the space. Finally, if you're really serious about taking your MLOB skills to the next level, we offer a free online course that is designed to help you understand the iterative philosophy and achieve your MLOB schools. Thanks for making it to the end. Devi and I will see you in the next video.